my wunderkind returns. In my entire court, I knew there was only one who could have succeeded in this task. Finally, the Ancoran sarcophagus is ours. You have been of service, and it is appreciated. As prince of this city, I have decided to grant you the privilege of siring one child. I'm sure you'll find this suitable recompense. If I may give you a piece of advice, choose carefully. Come, I've granted Beckett's request to study and document all the markings of the sarcophagus. You've met Beckett, haven't you? Let's go take a look inside and see what the commotion around the city has really been all about. What? Preposterous! No kindred would trust them, nor would they trust us. Did Jack tell you that? Because it sounds like you've been taken for a fool. And you believed them. They've been trying to take over L.A. for years. It's a ruse, a falsehood, spread to undermine my rule and turn kindred against each other, thin our ranks. They are duplicitous, evil creatures. Did they not try to kill you? Insurance. They lied to you in case you lived through the encounter. They hoped to create dissension in the ranks, rumors. It's a trick older than you or I. What have you assessed so far? Unfortunately for the Heralds of Doom, it appears we won't be opening Pandora's box. The markings, as far as I can tell, are of Assyrian origin. An extraordinary piece, but nothing earth-shattering. I see. Then there is no good reason why we shouldn't open it. <clears throat> Won't budge. Beckett, do you see any mechanism for the lid? I haven't as yet had a chance to pour over it with my fine-tooth comb. I think I have one in my bag. Why won't it... Why won't it open, Beckett? And you? I thought you said it looked as if it had been opened on the Dane. I want it open! You. You and Beckett, figure out a way to open it. I need to know what's inside. I have other matters to attend to. Come get me when a solution has been found. Ah, the depths to which I'll sink to prove others wrong. The young ones get so temperamental. Fortunately for... Sebastian, is it? I'd already made up my mind to open the sarcophagus, if only to show the city that Gehenna, contrary to popular belief, has not begun. In the last few seconds, I've had very few epiphanies. I may be old, but I didn't build it. How knowledgeable are you on ancient Assyrian funerary constructs? Hmm... Fortunately for us, I know of someone who has distinguished himself in this field. His name is Dr. Anders Johansson, a professor of archaeology from Norway. He was the one responsible for finding the sarcophagus, and as far as I know, the only authority on its origin and design. Until yesterday, he could have been found in his suite at the Empire Hotel downtown. But when I stopped by earlier this evening, all I found was spilt coffee on a morning paper. Appears he's been abducted. Where's the fun without complications? I detected the scent of myrrh incense, which is usually burned in monasteries. Also, I found beach sand in part of a muddy footprint. Putting two and two together, I located a monastery near a beach in Malibu, where I believe hunters are holding Johansson captive. Actually, there were two hunters on the roof of the building opposite the hotel who were positively delighted to tell me everything they knew, provided I stopped dangling them headfirst over the side. The hunters abducted Dr. Johansson for his own protection, or at least that's how they've justified it. He's being held by the Society of Leopold and used, quite ingeniously, as bait for Prince LaCroix's minions. 
Sebastian mentioned you ran into one of the hunters from the Society of Leopold some time ago. They're so secret a church organization, I don't even think they know if they exist. But essentially, they're murderers for Christ or some such deity. You'll have to go to the monastery and find a way into the tunnels beneath where the hunters are holding Johansson. I'm afraid I can't accompany you, but then it's best you go alone. Too many of us might set them off, like fundamentalists on contrary opinion. It's not that I don't love walking into the heart of danger to curry favor with the local magistrate of the hour, but... Actually, that's exactly it. I'd rather not get involved in the politics of it. Besides, I'd better document the sarcophagus before Sebastian's goon smashes it open. I wouldn't recommend walking. Certainly, Sebastian's already provided cab fare. I'm sure he always spares no expense when archaeology is at stake. Excellent. Hmm. I've said quite a lot about myself already. I know even less about you than you do me. Why don't you tell me about yourself? Then I'll let you in on a little secret. Beckett may not be the name I was born with. Events always seem to unfold wherever I go, like Chicago a few years ago. No, it's a bother to explain. Either I'm pursuing fate, or it's got a bone to pick with me. Unless you've got further questions, I'd really like to get back to looking at the sarcophagus. Did you find a way to open the sarcophagus? I can't have my protege looking plebeian, can I? You'll find I can be very generous towards those who serve me well. Point made. Which is... Traditionally, the Kuei Jin have stayed in Asian territory, and the kindred Europe, and later North America. But recently, they invaded the West Coast, killing off a substantial number of Anarchs. They lack the organization of the Camarilla and think nothing of breaking the masquerade. Though we share similar traits, there is no fraternity between us. We embrace. They rise from the grave. They do not know the pleasure of blood. They are without clan. And oh yes, they believe our kind to be inferior. They are as much of a threat as the wolves. Werewolves. I can still recall a time when cities were surrounded by miles of forests full of the beasts. But progress has taken care of that problem. Which is... If you didn't take the time to ask, perhaps we'd know by now. As I mentioned before, my concern is that it pertains something supernatural. Now, Beckett has waived this theory altogether. The city is alight with dread. Perhaps it's an antediluvian. A joke? The antediluvians are the mythical progenitors of each of the clans for whom they trace their bloodlines. And according to mythology, descendants of Cain, the legendary first vampire. As in the biblical Cain and Abel? Before you put too much stock in it, realize that the church and all of its mythos are blends of kindred and mortal meddling, whips to regulate weak minds. This is all Beckett's field of expertise. If you want a lesson, merely ask him. I wouldn't recommend walking. Certainly Sebastian's already provided cab fare. I'm sure he always spares no expense when archaeology is at stake. Remember, Dr. Johansson is an innocent. He has no idea we actually exist. Try not to put the idea in his head.
Yes. The Voce del Morte. The Giovanni never willingly share their secrets, and I've had little success infiltrating their strongholds. How did you obtain this? It will take some time to translate and unlock the secrets of this. I will have to move on from the city to evade any Giovanni seeking it. Take this. This will complete the terms we agreed to, and I think it is adequate compensation. It is the key of Alamut. It instills dread in those that would harm you, and makes it harder for them to strike you. Make no mistake, our dealings do not make us allies. If indeed we meet again, do not ask me for any favors. I will give you this final advice, however. Leave this city. These are its final nights. Discord looms heavy. I've felt this before. In November of 1938, I was translating documents in Leipzig, Germany, written by a purported Crusades-era necromancer. There also, I felt a sense of impending chaos. Soon after was the Kristallnacht, the wellspring of a new world war. You are... Just keeps getting more interesting, doesn't it, kiddo? The Giovanni, the Kuei Jin, lots of blood being spilled for a 10,000-year-old conversation piece, wouldn't you say? The streets, the hillsides, there's eyes and ears everywhere. I heard LaCroix has been talking to Beckett, too. Beckett's a skeptic about all this stuff. I just hope he knows to be careful dealing with that snake LaCroix. Well, Beckett's apolitical, you could say. He's just interested in the truth of our origins. Politics and all that and minor details to him. You do what you have to do. Kid, if you don't do it, somebody else will. You're in a good position to make a difference, Mr. Big Shot. A lot of kindreds wondering just which way you'll go.
You might like this. Now this is not your everyday ordinary pop gun. Only a few people ever get their hands on one of these. Take a look. Thanks for coming back. What you need? Alright, here's what we got today.
I pray now that you give me strength in battle, that I might overcome the hordes of Satan and his children, that I might wield the flaming sword of the Archangel and defend myself with your shield of faith, and that my victories are many and my wounds few, that I might further your kingdom here on earth. And if I meet death tonight, then let it be first that I cast a mighty host of demons back into the lake of fire whence they came, and then rest finally in the light of your glory.
or something? Perhaps. Shall I go and investigate it? No, if someone is out there, let him come to us. There's only one way in here, isn't there? You're mistaken. There's another way. We must be cautious. Yes, I suppose. But I don't know the man who can hold his breath for that long. It is not men. face. The fire. I can still feel it in my wounds. They'll kill me. They'll come back with their brands and it will burn. I wouldn't talk so they burned me. Again. And again. And again. Their eyes. They, they enjoyed it. Before they come back, I'm begging you. Let me out. I once drank from the most desirable women in the world. Right now, this bag looks better than any of them. Thanks. You'll never see me again. I'm gonna go somewhere no one will ever see this face again. I knew Johansson would lure the servants of Satan, but I said this guy for the Archfiend himself. Where is Lacroix? He is under divine protection. If you want him, come take him if you can.
I told you everything. There's no reason for you to keep me here. Let me go! I am an archaeologist. You can't hold me here like this. I am a hostage. I do not need protection. Bring me back to my hotel at once. Yeah, yeah, okay, anything. Just get me out of these caverns and away from these crazies. I think I'm starting to get pneumonia. <coughs> the sarcophagus? You went through all that trouble for the sarcophagus? Yeah, I'll tell you. But don't you think it would be better to get out of here before those men come back? I guess if you can get all the way here, you deserve the answers. But can I make one request first? After I answer your questions, you will help me escape. All right. Where should I begin? Let's start with the history of the Ankaran sarcophagus. That is a long and interesting legend, lost and found throughout the ages. Tell me, are you familiar with the Assyrians? Well, the Assyrians lived in Mesopotamia, a region between the Tigris and Euphrates rivers. Most of this territory is now modern-day Iraq, Iran, Turkey, and Syria. They were warmongers, conquerors, a people driven to expand by their kings. Even before the Romans, they migrated their conquered people to the territories to stem revolt. But I... Uh, I'm afraid I'm getting off the subject. Uh, yeah, yeah, well, the markings on the sarcophagus seem to hint that it is from some time between 1050 and 800 BC, which was a period of fierce expansion by the Assyrians. Oddly, for those years, only one king shows up on the historical record. While most likely he wiped all evidence of his predecessor's existence or passed the name to his heirs, one monarch, Messarach, the one-eyed king, is given credit for the territory and achievements of this time. But he would have had to have been over 250 years old, like a Dracula or something. I find it hard to believe a sarcophagus with a person as important as Maserat could remain in, oh, what is the word, pristine or intact condition for so many years, but this is who is believed to be contained within. Men educated, guess. Maybe you have not heard. It was stolen from the museum before we had a chance to open it. Usually, we use equipment to carbon date, x-ray, and take air samples before we pry open the lid. You know, it is interesting that you ask me that. The goddess on the outside of the sarcophagus was Lamastu. In Assyrian myth, Lamastu was an evil demoness who preyed on humans. Many people cite her as the mother of vampire myth. And the engravings on and found around the sarcophagus portray a regal figure drinking the blood of his enemies. Now, this image is found in many cultures, specifically among those of royal lineage, but there is a quite scientific explanation. A disorder known as porphyria. In short, it is caused by a deficiency of the iron in the blood, and in many cultures, for the nobility that could conceivably get away with the cure, the treatment was to drink human blood. Perhaps drinking the blood of your enemies is, if nothing else, symbolic. It can inspire fear in your foes and dissidents, don't misunderstand me. I in no way believe it was a vampire. Vampires. That's what caused this whole mess. These maniacs believe they exist. Uh, that is, uh, you see, in archaeology, one can spend years looking for a dig site, following local rumors, studying old maps. It's a complicated process, very boring. 
Finding and organizing a dig is the least interesting part of an archaeologist's job. Trust me, you don't want to hear about it. I don't know what would make you believe that. I have been very forthcoming with you so far. I <laughs> think that maybe you are not as familiar with the process as me. Okay, I tell you, yeah, I was not even aware of the sarcophagus' existence until I received a package with no reply address in the mail. Inside was the information on how to find it and the key. Please keep it a secret or I could be ruined. That I can't be sure of, nor can anyone. But I promise you it is more likely to be filled with uh, gummy bears than vampires. Perhaps maybe a mummy, but not likely the kind to go about chasing Abbott and Costello. Not much, really. I'm an archaeologist, not a mythologist. But I do know that Lamastu, the Assyrian demoness, was thought to have been the inspiration for Lilith, the first wife of Adam in the Jewish Old Testament, another source of the vampire myth. Ah, quite interesting. There is a surprisingly complex mechanical lock on the face of the sarcophagus. By sheer luck, we were able to find the key not far from the sarcophagus. Why no one ever found it and robbed it, it's perplexing. How strange, you would ask. I haven't seen the key since it was loaded onto the Elizabeth Dane in Turkey. It was stolen before the sarcophagus even. I am still hopeful that the police find both pieces before the contents can be disturbed. No, it's not the kind of key you can copy at the hardware store. It's actually very sophisticated, and I meant to study it at the museum. I've answered all your questions. Do you think now you could please get me out of here? I don't care who you are or why you've had so many questions about the sarcophagus. I just want to leave this place. Thank you, my friend. I don't know where you came from, but I will never forget this kindness. Your time of judgment is here. I had a dream this afternoon. You were in it. You were stroking my hair, telling me you loved me. And then, in the next instant, you were gone. And I was alone, and I cried out for you, but you wouldn't answer. <sighs> You're here now. I have never felt more relieved. 
But I... You don't mean it! <laughs> I'll leave, okay? But if you ever change your mind... Sure. All right. I'll, um... With whom do they think they're dealing? Attack me in my own building! They're desperate. <laughs> They've shown their weakness. A last-ditch attempt to steal the prize. The Sabat. A pack of shovelheads with cheap pistols was all they could muster. Two got a few stories up, but I took care of them. And my sheriff brought the rest their final death in the lobby. Sabat animals. No matter how many times you think you've wiped them out, they always come back. This time their target is the Ankaran sarcophagus. They will not stop until they've feasted on the ancient they believe to be inside. Diablerists. The Sabbat's infamy is in no small part due to their practice of Diablery, that is, drinking the blood of other kindred, especially older ones, until they are dead. Diablerists gain the power of those they've fed upon. And the Camarilla, this is an act punishable by death. Removing the Sabbat will prove no easy feat. Brute force simply won't do. They spawn like roaches. Their power structure must topple to truly be rid of them. Fortunately, I have devised a plan to undermine them. An agent of this court, Jesse, has been stalking one of the Sabbat's run-down burrows, observing them for some time. The heaviest concentrations of troops lie in East L.A. He can give you the information you need to infiltrate the Sabbat and evict them from my town for good. Very good. Speak with Jesse before you leave. He can provide you the details you'll need to succeed. Of course. I can't send you ill-prepared for such an important mission. Here. This should cover most of your costs. Remember, this is a covert operation. You need to act convincingly animalistic and disgusted with the Camarilla to have them accept you as their own. From that vantage point, you can pull precisely the right cards and make their whole house topple. Before you go, Beckett told me you went to the Society of Leopold. Did you find out how my sarcophagus is opened? What? What did you find out? A key? Where? Do you have it? <laughs> Not only did you infiltrate the Society of Leopold, but you managed to kill their greatest hunter. You certainly are developing a legend for yourself. Superb. A toast to you, and to victory over the Sabbat. And to Bach. May all his progeny meet such fates. Here. <laughs> Pity you don't have his head. I would have sent it to the Inquisitor General. The Sabbat must be eliminated. When you come back, we'll begin the hunt for the key. So you're the new pawn everyone's buzzing about? Jesse, 
street artist and adrenaline junkie by trade. Currently working off some karmic debt as the prince's toady. Sup? Well, I'm here to help you do that, but you're not gonna like it. I sure haven't so far. Listen, everyone in this town is either a waiter or an actor, but you're gonna have to be both. To infiltrate the Sabbat, you're going to have to be a consummate liar and do things you never wanted to do. Details come later. First, you need to get on the inn. Getting at these fiends is no easy task. From the moment you start interacting with them, you'll need to start proving you're as evil and messed up as they are. Don't look at me. You're going to have to ask the Archbishop Andre yourself. Like all dogs, they only respond to treats. You're going to offer me up as kibble, or at least you're going to tell them you're on the trail of a Camarilla spy on their turf. With any luck, that Samisi fuck will smell the bacon and won't resist. Doesn't really work like that. See, the thing about the Sabbat is, you kill one of these fucks, and the next reject that's been waiting a decade or five for a promotion steps up to the plate. They're like a ragtag army. They've got rank, they've got file. The only way to do any real damage is from the inside. It's the pawn's job to step into territory where knights and kings fear to tread. Offering yourself up to the archbishop might be an act you cannot come back from. You're gonna have to keep your wits about you to get back out of this. Whether you're up here pulling on strings or down there digging in the dirt, it's the same political nonsense. Just cover your ass and get out with your own life intact. Once you've set things in motion, find me in my gallery over in East LA, and I'll explain the players and all of this. LA is a funny town. Just as all the waiters are actors, all the walls are galleries. I got a few of my own. You can always count on the Sabbat to do the wrong thing for the right reasons. They're reckless, but they don't normally try to attract this much attention. This carelessness warrants observation. I hope it doesn't become pandemic. The Sabbat's goal is to stop Gehenna which is very similar to my own, though they choose to do so through more violent, fanatic, and flamboyant methods. The Camarilla, on the other hand, suspends belief entirely. Or so goes the party line. What I am is kindred. How others choose to categorize themselves concerns me only where local customs are concerned. Individualism is a path fraught with obstacles and sometimes angry mobs. But for all its hardships, it is the only one worth taking. What did Johansson have to say? The lock and key. An invention as ancient as greed, I should have guessed. All we have to do is find a victor in this nonsense. They'll be the one with the key. A Syrian origin. Glad to see I'm not losing my touch. As for Meserach, I'll have to research that name, see what I can find. Lamastu? She was a Lilith figure. They represent empowered women and the threat of such women to male-dominated society. Strange she would be engraved on a king's tomb. It seems to corroborate my own evidence. I'm going to have to study it a little more, maybe dig up some information on Meserak and the Lamastu myth. I'm certain the key will show up in time. Your information is appreciated. Excellent. Well, if we open it up and the world ends, then yes. If we open it up and the world does not end, 
then no. I'd wager the latter. How any sane kindred could think these poor unfortunates are an immediate threat to us is absurd. Most were afraid, or at the very least uneasy, around me. Tragic. Their desperation could very well hold the spark of revolution, however. It's simple. Someone's misled them into believing there's an antediluvian in this very room. They, and I suspect most kindred in this city, would love to sink their stakes or teeth into its imagined occupant. If indeed rocketing it to the moon was out of the question. Well, perhaps for this pack, it's for the best. I see you have returned. Did our first encounter not sate your bloodlust? Is wanton violence all you crave? Or perhaps it's oblivion you seek? I do not sense the seething animosity of the Camarilla in your eyes. Tell me, child, what are you doing here? You level our warehouse. You sacked my home, spoiled my schemes. You've proven a loyal and effective tool of your prince. One that would better serve the hands of the Sabbat. How can I trust one already so indoctrinated to the misguided ways of the Camarilla? So you understand the gravity of the situation. The danger we all face with the sarcophagus in the hands of a corrupt, vain true prince. I can sense your eagerness to act, but I require proof that you have abandoned the Camarilla completely. I put that burden upon you, child. A spy? That is too simple. Tell me where to find this so-called spy. Hmm. Very well. Announce yourself to Victoria, a doctor in East L.A. She will oversee your hunt. I will inform her you have my blessings. For now, you will be watched closely, Canite. Failure may be tolerated in the Camarilla, but one misstep in the Sabbat will be your last.
There you are. Money, right? My Vegas connection paid me a visit this afternoon. Popped his trunk, and what do you know? I had a flamethrower, a few tanks of spare fuel. It's yours if you want it. But, uh, ain't you flammable? Prepared a little number called a Dragon's Breath. It's a modified sawed-off, fires phosphorus shells. Personally, it's the only weapon I carry when I travel through Sabat country. Concerning? Who exactly? Gary? Sorry, name doesn't ring a bell. Concerning? Specifically? I don't go... So you made it to the bad side of town, eh? I won't ask what the Sabat made you do to get here. As long as you help me cut some slack on this collar the prince still has around my neck. Just one problem. I might have exaggerated, just a little, about the whole getting you through this mess bit. There's no plan whatsoever. Look. My relationship with the Prince is clumsy at best. I'm doing the bare minimum to survive. To be honest, I care more about my street art than whatever the fuck LaCroix decides his priority is this week. You might want to consider the same. Dude, I'm too busy getting stoned to fight your battles for you. I'm smart enough to keep my eyes open though. That's just survival. So I can tell you who's who and what they're up to, but after that, man, you're on your own. Good news for you is you couldn't have picked a better time to come fuck with the Sabbat. The Hood's bishop just took a dirt nap. So now, every Sabbat with an ounce of influence is squabbling to stake their claim to that power. It's Sabbat politics. Don't ask me. 
The point is, the big bad Sabat want to be bigger and badder Sabat. They'll stop at nothing to sink their greedy fangs into the power they'd have over the local Sabat packs. And you can bet they're about to turn on each other. Lucky you, here just in time to play one pack off another. Yep, the more things change, right? Sabat are really not that different from the Kamis. They're just a little more open about being totally awful. You're infiltrating, remember? Go talk to the top brass. Victoria and the projects. Hazel at the church. See what's making them tick. Help them out if you can. Gain someone's trust. But be ready to put a knife in their back the second they turn on you. <laughs>